Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I have a rather bone chilling story to share with you guys. Now this story I came across kind of by accident. I wasn't looking for anything spooky. I was just browsing some news sites a couple of days ago and this headline popped out at me and I clicked on it and I couldn't stop reading about it. So considering it was a headline a few days ago, Needless to say, we're going to have to go back a few years to get to the beginning of the story. Now, this story lines up a little more closely with true crime than with paranormal, although crime's not really the right word either, I guess, when you think of crime. You know, you wouldn't think of something like this, but you guys, this freaked me out to my very soul. So let me tell you about this story. So back in 2014, a man and woman named Derek and Maria, they bought their dream home in New Jersey. You see, Derek grew up working class in Maine, but as he became an adult, he started working really hard. He started working his way up the corporate ladder, and you know, now he's, I believe, 40 ish has a good job and he was able to buy for himself and his family their dream home like I said and it cost him 1.3 million dollars this was an older house one that was in need of a lot of renovations a lot of updates and things like that so after they purchased the house they began the renovations however very shortly after they purchased the house the first letter arrived and that letter read to the new owner. Dearest new owner at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades. Now, and as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched this house in the 1920s. My father watched it in the 1960s. And it is now my time. Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. And it was signed, The Watcher. That letter had come at night, and as soon as Derek read it, he immediately went around the house and turned off all the lights so that if he was being watched that very moment, the, whoever was watching would have a more difficult time. He was obviously and understandably very freaked out by it. Soon after that, the police were contacted, and then a while after that, Derek and Maria decided to reach out to the previous owners of the house. They wanted to see if the previous owners had any idea who could be sending them a letter like that. And they also wanted to know if maybe the previous owners had had anything similar happen to them. Anything that they could get, any kind of information. And shortly thereafter, the woman who was part of the couple that owned the house, she wrote back saying that a few days before they moved, they had in fact received a letter that she deemed very odd, was how she put it, but that they had lived in the house for 23 years previous and had had no troubles. From then on, Derek and Maria were on high alert at all times. They still didn't actually live inside the house because the renovations were still going on. Then another letter, part of that one said, do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your old house too small for the growing family? Or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. They checked, but the envelope had no return address. Written was, who am I? There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I'm in one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one. Look out any of the many windows of 657 Boulevard at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. The letter concluded with a suggestion that this message would not be the last. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Let the party begin. And this was followed once again by the cursive signature that said, The Watcher. 
Soon after that, they stopped bringing the children to the house, period. They didn't want the children anywhere near there, which is completely understandable. And at this point, they didn't even know if they would move into the house. At this point, investigations began. The police are more heavily involved. The family hires private investigators, but there's no trail, you know? There's no fingerprints on the letters. There's no digital trail that the police or the PIs can follow. There's no scene of the crime as there were to be investigated. It's just kind of a dead end every way they look. The renovations, including a top-notch security system, were finally finished a few months later. Family, of course, are very nervous about moving in. At this point, they've long sold their old house and they're now living with Maria's parents. And it got to the point where Derek would have to leave in the middle of the night, go over to the new house, do things that needed to be done, whether that be shoveling the driveway or other such like upkeep sorts of things, and then he'd go back to his in-law's house. Then after the first really disturbing letter, it was two weeks later when Maria stopped by the house to look at some of the paint samples. Um, she recognized thick black letter lettering on a card-shaped envelope and called the police again. Another letter had arrived and this one said, Welcome again to your new home at 657 Boulevard, the watcher wrote. The workers have been busy and I have been watching you unload carfuls of your personal belongings. The dumpster is a nice touch. Have they found what's in the walls yet? In time, they will. This time, the watcher had addressed Derek and Maria directly by name. And you know, it makes you wonder like, how do they know the names? Uh, in the article, they guess maybe the watcher had been close enough that he could have heard the construction workers and the renovators mention their names. Um, but then the letter also identified their three children by name. And not just by name, also by birth order and nicknames. And those nicknames were the names that Maria would yell whenever they were at the house and the kids were outside and she was calling for them to come back to the house. So clearly this watcher, he is nearby and he is always listening. The letter continued. It said, I'm pleased to know your names now and the name of the young blood you have brought to me. You certainly say their names often. The letter asked about one child in particular whom the writer had seen using an easel inside an enclosed porch. Is she the artist of the family? The letter continued. It said 657 Boulevard is anxious for you to move in. It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of the house. Have you found all of the secrets it holds yet? Will the young blood play in the basement? Or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very careful if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic or will you all sleep on the second floor? Who has the bedrooms facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help me to know who is in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. All of the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. Who am I? I am the Watcher and I have been here in control of 657 Boulevard for the better part of two decades now. The Woods family turned it over to you. It was their time to move on and kindly sold it when I asked them to. I pass by many times a day. 657 Boulevard is my job, my life, my obsession. And now you are too. Welcome to the product of your greed. Greed is what brought the past three families to 657 Boulevard, and now it has brought you to me. Have a happy moving in day. You know I'll be watching. Now, if that's not the creepiest thing you've ever heard, can you imagine opening a letter and that's what it says inside? I can't even, I can't. <laughs> Anyway, they never moved into the house. In 2015, they put it for sale on the market, but um, it really wasn't budging. It took 
years in fact and that's what the article I had seen a few days ago was saying that I believe on July 2nd they finally finally sold the house they I can't imagine the relief they must have felt when they finally sold it now unfortunately they had to take quite the hit for it like I said earlier in the video they bought it for 1.3 million but um, they were only able to sell it for 900,000 I'm assuming at that point they were just happy to have it off of their hands <laughs> So now hopefully the family can at the very least breathe a little easier and at the end of the article too I had read that Netflix had recently uh, bought the story and they're going to be turning it into a movie or a series so I can't wait to see that. Um, as I was reading about this I just got so wrapped up and invested in this mystery <laughs> which I guess will probably forever remain unsolved because I mean who's going to come forward and admit to being the one terrorizing that family and it'll be interesting to see now that the house has sold if we ever see it pop up in the news again for any sort of reason hopefully not hopefully whatever was going on is done now and the new owners can enjoy their home in peace so anyway let me know if you liked this video i certainly hope you did if you did i hope you'll subscribe that helps me out a ton and let me know in the comments down below had you heard of this story before what did you think of it what would you do if you were in that position you bought a new house and suddenly you start getting really dark really cryptic really threatening letters also i'm going to link down below to the two articles that i read that really gave me all of the info for this video um, so you can read those articles and um, go even more in depth because i just kind of brushed the surface with this but those articles are really really great and uh yeah i will see you guys on friday with another book talk video bye guys